I'm a surgical oncologist who focuses entirely on hepatobiliary surgery. So I operate on the liver and the bile duct. As a hepatobiliary surgeon, I am joined by multiple other specialties, including hepatology, medical oncology, radiation oncology, and interventional radiology in our multidisciplinary clinic. The ideal patient to be seen in our multidisciplinary clinic is really any patient. It is best that we see them as early as possible after diagnosis to allow them the most possible options for their particular cancer. However, we do see patients for second opinion. We also see patients who have recurrence or metastatic disease. So really, you know, we're happy to see a patient at any point in their journey uh, with liver cancer. We think it's really important to work with our referring providers as a team. Patients are coming from all over and will likely have some part of their treatment um, in their local facility. We will reach out by EPIC if that is appropriate. However, for people who do not have EPIC, we'll reach out by other means, including phone. We'll always send a copy of our, our, our note uh, from the multidisciplinary clinic, which includes our recommendations for treatment. Um, we also will always invite that provider uh, to be part of our discussion if they would like to be involved. The multidisciplinary clinic does offer diagnostic testing if there is anyone who is thought to have a high likelihood of having a liver cancer, we are happy to see them. Our multidisciplinary clinic at Johns Hopkins is really unique because our providers are really international and national experts in the field. We do have, when people say multidisciplinary clinic, we really do have all of the specialties that are involved in every discussion um, from hepatology, interventional radiology, radiation oncology, surgery, medical oncology, pathology. Everybody is there every week uh, and are really part of the decision-making process. Other reasons I think that the multidisciplinary clinic at Johns Hopkins is unique is that we really do include the referring provider um, and want them to be involved in the process. We have a wonderful nurse coordinator who's able to really guide the patients through the entire process. We offer multiple unique and advanced surgical options for patients who have primary liver cancer. These range from minimally invasive surgical options, including robotic surgery with short stays, such as overnight stay for minor hepatectomies, to more advanced surgery, including ALP surgery for patients who have extensive disease. We also offer hepatic artery infusion pump for patients who have unresectable cancers to really give them the option uh, for intensive treatment with the idea to convert them to resectability. Advanced surgical technologies such as ALPS as well as hepatic artery infusion pump are not offered widely across the country, um, but are done frequently here at Johns Hopkins. Advances in systemic therapy, as well as the addition of new novel therapies, have allowed us to offer surgery to patients who otherwise were not considered surgical candidates previously. This has really allowed us to offer treatment with curative intent to a wider range of patients who come here to Johns Hopkins. My name is Marina Baretti. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm a physician scientist uh, researcher here at Johns Hopkins with a focus on clinical translational research in liver and bile duct cancers. I 
our multidisciplinary clinic is really specialized in the evaluation of patients with uh, primary liver cancers, which means hepatocellular carcinoma, cholangiocarcinoma, including gallbladder cancer, periampullary cancer, and even the more rare form of fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma, which affects mostly young patients. Um, ideally, uh, we will see patients at every stage, but of course, especially in the early stage, those are the more complex, challenging case where we really need the integration of different specialties, evaluation from surgery uh, that have high volume experience in this type of patients, evaluation from transplant team in the selected cases, evaluation from the medical oncology for uh, potential integration of systemic therapy in the treatment paradigm. So I think that if I have to give um, a, a recommendation, I, I will say that especially patients with earlier stage disease should really be evaluated in a multidisciplinary setting because the overall goal is to always ensure the patients have access with, to the treatment uh, paradigm that has the highest chance of a curative intent. I think that what is unique about us is really uh, that we are patient-focused, meaning that we really want to meet what are the patient's needs um, at every level. We also have the unique situation of having real you know, national and international expert in all the different specialties involved in the MDC, from surgery to radiation to medical oncology. And we make our best efforts to have always, at every moment, uh, scientifically sound uh, clinical trials for patients at each stage. So I think what is unique of our clinic is the um, close integration and communication of interdisciplinary uh, specialties, um, how we really try to minimize the um, the need for patients to come back and forth multiple times, but to coordinate the care in a just one day for them to see all the uh, key providers. All these providers then will very early on and basically simultaneously give their uh, recommendation. And this is usually uh, very well uh, accepted and welcomed by patients. Another aspect is that because patients are there and they talk with the providers at the same time, they can really play a key role in the decision-making process, and this is, again, uh, something the patients and caregivers value a lot. We welcome any type of referral. Patients can be newly diagnosed, and the referring physician may want some help on the next steps of both from a diagnostic perspective or a treatment perspective. Patients can be already on a treatment and they might want to come for us to uh, confirm that that's the best you know, recommendation and treatment plan for themselves. Patient may be at a crucial point where they are in the situation where they need to change treatment or where they were told that they were not a surgical candidates. I think in all these situations, having a second opinion in a tertiary institution center such as Johns Hopkins, where again, there is a high volume of this patient that we see really on a daily basis is extremely relevant because there has been a number of cases in which we actually change the initial recommendation based on our uh, internal evaluation. Having access to a high volume center that is specialized specifically to this type of cancer when there are both you know, laboratory-based researchers and clinical translational researchers that just do this over and over a day, uh, every day really can totally change the outcome of patients.
probably up to 80% of patients with both hepatocellular carcinoma and bile duct cancer would deserve uh, multiple modalities, integration of local therapy and systemic therapy. But with the advent of novel therapy, especially immunotherapy, there has been a clear evidence that it might be a synergy of combined different modalities to introduce systemic therapy in the earlier stage to try to ensure the longest you know, survival and even cure for our patients, and on the opposite, to integrate local therapy you know, surgery in selected case, radiation in the more advanced stage, again, to prolong the quantity, but also the quality of life of our patients. So I, I truly think that, yes, immunotherapy is not really the future, it's the present for the management of both hepatocellular carcinoma and bile duct cancers. I think what is going to be the future is how we best integrate these drugs and how we can even generate the next generation of drugs. A lot of work that we are doing here at Johns Hopkins with our team is to think about what are the best way to deliver immunotherapy, to think about integration of vaccine in earlier and more advanced stage. One of the seminal work done at Hopkins, uh, among the first probably in the world was to use an immunotherapy-based approach in the earlier stage of hepatocellular carcinoma. That was, you know, one of the very first studies showing the feasibility and, and also the great immunological response that you can achieve in that population. So I truly believe that kind of the sky is the limit. We have now much better way to do research both in the laboratory, but also in clinical research to integrate the two. We often learn so much from the patients themselves. So there is what we call the early verse, you know, uh, clinical research. We go from the bench to the bedside and then back to the bench to really try to understand better how we can improve uh, our patient's outcome.